Hello everyone, welcome back to the forge. Now today we're going to jump back in on our Wakazashi build with a part two video. As you can tell, I've already started hand sanding. And uh, if you've checked the community tab out, you already know that it did take a really nice hamon. You may be able to see that. Let's get it up here to the camera, maybe you can see a little better. Yeah, you can see it in there pretty good. It's lying right along here. So our furnace cement did work. It did its job. I couldn't resist throwing it in for a test etch the other day, just had to. Um, with that being said though, we've got a long way to go on hand sanding this, so I'm going to go ahead and jump in on hand sanding. And when I catch you in a minute, all the hand sanding will be done, and we'll start discussing all the fittings. So let's get to work. All right, got our blade all sanded up. It's at about a 400 grit. I will go back and clean it up even more because it's bound to get dings and scratches as we work on these parts. Uh, but we're gonna turn our attention to the habaki first. And for that, I have these old fittings. They're just copper fittings I have laying around. And I have these couple of pieces here that I've had here forever. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut these up I will anneal them and then hammer them out and what we want is to find a piece that matches our thickness right here at the shoulder and then we'll use that to make the hibaki and then we'll solder it together and move on. Alright, so let's get on it. All right, something to remember while doing this is anneal this as much as you need to. You know, don't try to cut any corners and just start hammering away on it because if it starts feeling stiff under the hammer, you're more than likely fixing to crack it or break it. So, like I said, always stop, anneal it. If you have a torch, use it to anneal it. However you're working on it, keep it soft. Almost ready to solder this together. 
All right, I'm fixing to go in here and cut this off. You can see my line I've scribed right there between my fingers. That's where it needs to be. I'm going to go ahead and cut it off on out here. And then I'll solder it together and then we'll come in and clean it up. I like having a little extra in case I mess something up. You know, I got a lot of cleanup work to do on this. So I don't want to think I've got something nice and then grind it in and find out there's nothing in there. So let's get it cut off. All right, got both of our SEPA fit up. Now our SUBA will go in between these. And so I've got to get this heated up. This is a half pound of copper. Get it heated up in the forge and kneel it and then flatten it down because right now it's way too thick. And then we'll get it slotted and fit up. And then we'll turn our attention to the handle. So here's our piece of copper. I kneeled it in the forge and then used the press to flatten it out and then finish flattening it out by hand. I have already applied the docking layout fluid to this side and scribed some rough center lines. Since the edges aren't perfectly square, just had to kind of eyeball it, but it looks good enough. And if you notice, there's some little lines right here. What those are for is I actually came in here with my drill bit and I started on the ends and laid the drill bit out and marked and then just did one on each side until I got the center area here. I got that from Kyle Royer. It just kind of helps lay out so you're not drilling here and then randomly over here. It just helps lay everything out and you can actually get as many holes as you can in here neatly and cleanly without any guesswork. I will drill here and here, and then here and here, and then we'll just mill out this center section here and clean all the corners up. Alright, so let's go ahead and get an end mill found, get it chucked up, and get to work.
All right, so this is where we are. Everything's roughed up. I'm fixing to turn my attention in a moment to the Suba and start figuring out the design that I want to go with on that. Uh, the way things stand right now with the handle on here, this handle would extend to right here through my hand completely. And I mean, that would be pretty good. I just am really not liking the shortness of this tang. Uh, I think that I'm going to go ahead and weld on a couple of inch extension. I probably should have left the tail on the file when I forged this. I was focusing more on the blade than the tang. The tail would have gave me just enough to get that extra little bit. Uh, so you live, you learn. But like I was saying, I will probably go ahead and grind the chamfer around this and make a piece of steel that fits it perfectly and then fill it up with weld. Get it welded up good and nice. Uh, get it all cleaned up. With that being said, uh, let's go ahead and move on looking at the Suba. All right, from what I've read, the most common Wakazashi handle length was 8.7 inches. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna do mine at nine inches. All right, now to discuss the elephant in the room. Now I wanna handle this nine inches, nine inches and so we look at this and we can already tell that the tang is going to be way too short uh, once you throw in the spacers and the guard and the whole nine yards and then i've got to add another spacer here and then of course we're going to have the piece on the end i ideally would prefer for this tang to be at least three quarters of the way three quarters length but these files are a lot like 1095 i had a lot, lot of extra 1095 laying around so i'm going to weld an extension on and so I will extend it out to about three quarters of an inch or three quarters of the way of the handle here. I feel a whole lot better with that already. There is our extension welded on. Tried to keep it with the flow of the blade as possible, as much as possible. All right, let's go ahead and move on to working on the handle. All right, <clears throat> I've already sketched out the tang portion of our Wakazashi onto this piece of wood and I've used a red Sharpie, but I'm gonna go back over it with a pencil. Uh, I want the lines to be a little bit smaller and I'll be taking this over to my milling machine and milling it out. I don't have the woodworking chisels and everything else. This way is just quicker. Once I get this piece milled out we'll get them glued up and let them set up and start getting ready to shape them up. Then we can start shaping our sepa here and move on to our uh, other pieces of the sword. All right, got both of our sides slotted out. Got a pretty equal amount out of each side. A little more on one than the other, that's fine. Already checked it on the tang, fits up good. So now we're gonna glue this together and move on to the next step.
All right, so the glue is set up nice on the handle. So let's go over here to the grinder and get this ground down so we can move on to some other things. All right, now that our handle's shaped, we can move on to getting our SEPA here ground down to match up with the handle, then we can address our guard, and then we can move on to doing the other pieces of the fittings that we need, and not too far off from wrapping this handle up and then giving it the proper wrap and being done. Let's move on. All right, I've got all of our fittings here shaped. I'm gonna go ahead and take a pencil and I'm gonna draw around this piece here. Then I'm gonna go in there and I've got a little texturing tool and we're gonna texture this guard. All right, I don't want the texture underneath that because if I do, it's liable to make some gapping that I don't think will look very good, so. All right, let's go out here and start hammering. All right, so this is what I'm gonna be using here. Uh, somebody has taken and ground some little balls on the end of this. Uh, looks like they've actually brazed a couple on. Uh, these were given to me by a, a friend of mine. Uh, they were in his dad's old stuff. And I think they was initially used for leather work, but I've played around with some annealed copper and it gives it a nice hammered texture that I can kind of control without being all over the place. So let's go ahead and give them a go. All right, here's the piece, if it'll come into focus. Here's the piece that I've been around the top of the handle. I believe this is called the Fuji. Um, I'm fixing to put it here on my granite block and take my height gauge, because it's, it's pretty uneven, because you know it was rough cut. And I'm gonna scribe around, because I know that one side is the factory edge and one side is not. And I tried to keep that factory edge as close as I could uh, to one another. It's pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead. I've colored it with red Sharpie. I'm going to use my height gauge here to find the lowest point on this and then scribe the same height all the way around. You can see it right there. So I'm going to go over the grinder and grind that off. And then we'll set it on the handle and see how she looks. All right, nice snug fit. That's what I wanted. I'll push it down a little bit more, and I gotta grind this even up here at the top. And we'll be in pretty good shape. All right, we've got all of our fittings. All right, 
everything's good and tight, we're going to turn our attention to the Kashira down here. All right, I got a Kashira done. There we go. There we go. It's in place. Nice and snug. All right, the way that I did it, for you, those of you that may be wondering, is I took some more pieces of the of the fittings I had, and I just ground the notch in around, much like I did at the Fushi up here, and, you know, just rounded it around to fit the handle. And then I took a piece of this flat copper, made sure both surfaces were good and clean, laid the ring on there, fluxed it real well uh, with flux paste, cut off little pieces of solder, dropped it inside of the ring, and then used a piece of the solder to solder where the, the ring went together. Uh, and then heated from the bottom, and of course all the solder melted, affixing the ring to the flat piece, and I soldered the gap. It's not perfect. I'm getting better. The whole point of this project is to learn as I go. Uh, but it'll work. So now I'm going to move on to right here on this handle. Get the focus back in again. So now I'm going to move on to cutting the notches here on the end. Uh, that will go all the way through where uh, we'll wrap the handle wrapping and tie it off in the knot. So I'm going to go ahead and mark those out. I will probably be cutting those with the rotary carver because this copper is still pretty soft and I'm thinking when I go to drill through it, it's going to bend. I don't really want it to bend. So I'm going to go ahead and take care of that and I'll catch you in a minute. All right, I got the slots in here. This is where the handle wrapping will pass back and forth as we wrap the handle. And now I've got to cut the notch in the top of our wood here on the handle. I've already drilled the holes, so I'm going to go ahead and cut that out. Alright, 
here she is. Pretty happy with how it turned out. Not too bad for an old Nicholson file and some plumbing fittings and some scrap. I appreciate you for watching. Uh, if you would hit that subscribe button down below if you haven't already. Ring the notification bell to notify me of this content as it posts. Uh, if you're into blacksmithing and want some really cool things to work on, head over to blacksmithingblanks.com. Use the coupon code MATT and you'll save 10% on your purchases. They have everything from preformed hooks to guillotine tools and a lot of other cool stuff. With that being said, I appreciate you all. You have a good one. I'll catch you on the next one. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.